Evening prayer on Thursday the 16th of September, Lesser Festival of Ninian. If you're wanting to follow the words, you can find them on the church's website, Church of England website, the uh, Aremus Daily Prayer, or download it for apps for Android or Apple devices. Welcome, whether you are joining us um, on Zoom, or intending to, Facebook or YouTube. I'm also actually here in St Mary's Halesworth, so if you would like to, you could join me in person in the future. If you want to join on Zoom, the details for the meeting are on the Blythe Valley Church's Team and Cluster uh, website and Facebook page, and I'm streaming from the Facebook page this evening. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of God's chosen one. There shall come forth a shoot from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and to decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf, the lion, and the fatling together, and with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. We have two psalms appointed this evening, 39 and 40. If you're following in the book, you'll need to turn to the back to the Psalter from evening prayer Thursday, ordinary time. I'll read straight through. We've got the refrains which we'll use and the glory be before we return to the refrain on each occasion. If you'd like to use the prayers that follow, we'll pause so that you may. If you'd like to join in, you may read them all with me or the even-numbered verses. If you were with me live or on, um, on YouTube or in person, you could do the even-numbered verses so that in the end we cover them all and I'd just read the odds. Psalm 39 and Psalm 40. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days. I said I will keep watch over my ways so that I offend not with my tongue. I will guard my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are in my sight. So I held my tongue and said nothing. I kept silent, but to no avail. My distress increased. My heart grew hot within me. While I mused, the fire was kindled, and I spoke out with my tongue. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days, that I may know how short my time is. You have made my days but a hand's breadth, and my lifetime is as nothing in your sight. Truly, even those who stand upright are but a breath. We walk about like a shadow, and in vain are we are in turmoil. We heap up riches and cannot tell who will gather them. And now what is my hope? Truly my hope is even in you. Deliver me from all my transgressions, and do not make me the taunt of the fool. I fell silent and did not open my mouth, for surely it was your doing. Take away your plague from me, I am consumed by the blows of your hand. With rebukes for sin you punish us, like a moth you consume our beauty. Truly everyone is but a breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear to my cry. Hold not your peace at my tears. For I am a stranger with you, but a stranger with you, a wayfarer as all my forebears were. Turn your gaze from me that I may be glad again before I go my way and I am no more. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, let me know my end and the number of my days.
Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord, my God. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me out of the roaring pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a rock and made my footing sure. He has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. He does not turn to the proud that follow a lie. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord, my God. How great your designs for us. There is none that can be compared with you. If I were to proclaim them and tell of them, they would be more than I am able to express. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sacrifice for sin you have not required. Then said I, lo, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me that I should do your will, O my God. I delight to do it. Your law is within my heart. I have declared your righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness I have not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and truth from the great congregation. Do not withhold your compassion from me, O Lord. Let your love and your faithfulness always preserve me. For innumerable troubles have come about me. My sins have overtaken me so that I cannot look up. They are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them be driven back and put to shame who wish me evil. Let those who heap insults upon me be desolate because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation say always, The Lord is great. Though I am poor and needy, the Lord cares for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. O my God, make no delay. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord, my God. Scrolling past the canticle online, turning back to evening prayer, Thursday, ordinary time, for the canticle, Great and Wonderful. We'll read it as we did the psalm. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord, for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. All nations shall come and worship you, O Christ, and share in the feast of your kingdom. Before we get to First Kings, <clears throat> this is a reading from Kindle Edition Celebrating the Saints, a reading from The Life of Saint Ninian by Aylred of Rivo. As a young man, Ninian travelled to Rome, and there the Pope placed him in the care of good teachers of the truth to be instructed in the disciplines of the faith and in the meaning of Scripture. The young man, full of God, did not labour in vain, or to no purpose. In the course of his studies, he came to realise how much of his previous education at the hands of unskilled teachers had been at variance with sound doctrine. Therefore, with all eagerness, Ninian opened wide the mouth of his soul to receive the word of God. Like a bee which sucks nectar from many different flowers, he formed in his mind honeycombs of wisdom constructed from the arguments he gathered from his various teachers. He stored them in the secret recesses of his heart, preserving them until they had been thoroughly digested, with the result that in later years he could bring forth from his inner person a wisdom that not only nurtured his own soul, but also brought comfort to others. Truly it was the due reward for one for who the love of truth had been prepared to forsake his native land, wealth and pleasure. Having lived for many years in the city, it came to the knowledge of the Bishop of Rome that in certain western parts of Britain were yet many who had not received the faith of our Saviour, and that some were hearing the word of the Gospel from the lips of heretics and those poorly instructed in the law of God. Moved by the Spirit of God, the Pope with his own hands therefore ordained the man of God to the Episcopate, and having bestowed on him his blessing, appointed him apostle to his native land. Ninian travelled home via the city of Tours, for at this time the most blessed Martin was its bishop, and he had long been desirous to meet him. There he stayed for a while, consulting the holy man. On reaching his native land, a great crowd of people were about, went out to meet him. Went about to meet him. Great was the joy of all, wonderful the devotion, everywhere resounded with the praise of Christ, for everyone regarded Ninian as a prophet. Straight away this diligent workman entered upon the field of his land, rooting out what had been wrongly planted, scattering what had been wrongly collected, and pulling down that which had been wrongly built. Then, with the minds of his people purged of error, Ninian began to lay in them the foundations of the true faith, building with the gold of wisdom, the silver of knowledge, and the precious stones of good works. 
He chose the site for his church, the place which is now called Whithorn. It is situated on the shore of the ocean. The land running far out to sea is studded so far out to sea. Sorry, the land running far out to sea, so that it is enclosed by the sea on three sides, with access only from the north. Here, by the command of the man of God, stonemasons whom he had brought with him from Tours built a church of stone, before which it is said no other had ever been built in Britain. When Blessed Indian died, perfect in life and full of years, he left this world a happy man, and accompanied by the angels, his soul was carried to heaven, there to receive his eternal reward. To our first Bible reading, 1 Kings 11 from 1 to 3. Online, it's just before the canticle we read a moment ago. If you're using a Holy Bible, <clears throat> it turn to the beginning, and about a quarter of the way in, you'll find Kings and two books of Kings, two books of Chronicles to flick through or use an index. The first book of Kings, the 11th chapter, large numbers at the head of the paragraph, chapter 11, and in the text, small numbers are the verse numbers 1 to 13. 1 Kings 11, 1 to 13. King Solomon loved many foreign women, among, along with the daughter of Pharaoh, Merbite, Ammonite, Edomite, Sidonian, and Hittite women, from the nations concerning which the Lord had said to the Israelites, You shall not enter into marriage with them, neither shall they with you, for they will surely incline your hearts to follow their gods. Solomon clung to these in love. Among his wives were seven hundred princesses and three hundred concubines. His wives turned away his heart. When Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other go gods, and his heart was not true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon followed Astarte, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. So Solomon did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, did not completely follow the Lord as his father had done. Then Solomon built a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and for Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites. On the mountain east of Jerusalem, he did the same for all his foreign wives who offered incense and sacrificed to their gods. Then the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice and had commanded him concerning this matter that he should not follow other gods, but he did not observe what the Lord commanded. Therefore the Lord said to Solomon, Since this has been your mind, and you have not kept my covenant and my statutes that I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom from you and give it to your servant. Yet for the sake of your father David, I will not do it in your lifetime. I will tear it out of the hand of your son. I will not, however, tear away the entire kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David, and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. So Solomon has this extraordinary number of women as wives, <clears throat> each with their own gods from their native lands, and uh, he is turned to worshipping them, presumably alongside the worship of his god, the god of the Israelite people, the god of his father, David. And so um, the rule of the whole of the Israelite people, the twelve tribes, is torn from him, but one remains for David and Jerusalem because of God's promise to David. So even when we are, God is still with us and God will still retain an element of grace and a presence, however far we stray as individuals or people. And uh, our own turning aside, our own lack of faithfulness, not only affects us, but those people who are related to us. May God be gracious. Acts 17 from 16, our second reading. So this is in the second covenant. Online we scroll past the canto we read a moment ago. If you're using a book, you'll need to turn to the latter third, the second covenant or New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, then Acts. Large number 17, the chapter number. Acts 17, small number in the text from 16 to the end. Acts 17 from 16. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was deeply distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he argued in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons, and also in the marketplace every day, with those who happened to be there. Also some Epicurean and Stoic philosophers debated with him. Some said, what does this babbler want to say? Others said he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign divinities. This was because he was telling the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took him and brought him to the Areopagus and asked him, may we know what this new teaching is? that you are presenting it sounds rather strange to us so we would like to know what it means now all the Athenians and the foreigners living there would spend their time in nothing but telling or hearing something new <coughs> 
Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how you are extremely religious in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. He who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God, and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some scoffed, but others said, We will hear you again about this. At that point Paul left them. But some of them joined him and became believers, including Dionysus, the Areopagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So Paul is waiting. You might like to look up and see who he's waiting for. Is it his fellow apostles? Um, is it accusers? I'm not sure. But he's on the move and he's waiting. He's got as far as Athens, and in Athens... They were great philosophers and they just liked to debate and discuss new thoughts and ideas. And uh, so he pops up. They were of the view that his uh, words are babbling, that it's new, it's strange. But he engages with them where they are at. I'm reminded of Jesus talking to the woman at the well. He says, I see you're very religious, but I saw amongst your altars one to an unknown God. And it's this God I'm talking to you about. Indeed, your own poets say that we are God's offspring. So he links to what he knows, to what they know. And he doesn't use uh, Jewish metaphor, which he's perfectly capable of doing elsewhere, at least in this reported speech. And it's only when he talks about resurrection from the dead that uh, some give up and go home. But we are given the names of two significant people, Dionysius and Damaris, two who come to faith. Presumably the first is male and the second is female. Uh, Dionysius the Areopagite. So he, he has convinced one of the people who go to that debating chamber who had heard all sorts of Greek Hellenistic philosophies but this strange Jewish foreign custom that's been translated into their own vernacular by Paul to win them has won them, these two at least. May we be inspired by Paul as he prays for us that we might be um, find ourselves in conversation with those around us to the effect that they may learn, understand what it is that God stands for and uh, be drawn to faith by God's grace. To the responsory then back in evening prayer on Thursday evening, ordinary time, after the reading. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. The Song of Mary, with a refrain, if you're following in the book, you might need to look up today's date, I think it's the 16th of September. Ninian, find direction there to the common of bishops or similar. Otherwise, join in it, my soul proclaims. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news and proclaim the gospel of peace. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has, strength, he has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news and proclaim the gospel of peace. Let us pray. Father, Son, Spirit, three in one, one in three, we thank you for this day and for all that we have achieved in it. And as the day comes to a close, we recognise that we are insufficient and we have not achieved all those things we would have 
all those things you've called us to, there are things that we should have done that we haven't. We thank you that your grace covers us and that you will nevertheless maintain your promise um, despite our shortcomings. And we thank you that we have been amongst people. We pray that they will have learned something of you from our thoughts, words and actions today as we've engaged with them in their culture where they are. We pray that they will be drawn closer to you and in time choose to follow and worship and to engage with the fullness of life that is available to them in you, should they choose that. From Release International Prayer Feed to my prayer mate app for the 16th of September, in relation to Indonesia, we pray for a congregation of a church in Makassar whose building was targeted by suicide bombers on Palm Sunday. 20 people were injured in that attack. Coming round again to use the Christian Aid Prayer Diary as I open it on my tablet here. As uh, they have not yet re-established their uh, prayer diary. Prayers for Syria. We pray for Christian Aid Partners continuing to offer education through the disruption of conflict. The Suffolk Diocese Cycle of Prayer invites us to pray today for St Margaret in Ipswich with their um, vicar, the Reverend Canon David. They are in Ipswich Deanery. We pray for him, the people who help him and serve with him in that uh, population, in that community, in the city there. We pray your blessing on his expression of faith and that you would draw people to yourself through him and sustain them in their work. May they be known to be serving people and supportive and encouraging of their community initiatives work and work around and about them. We pray for the uh, information technology industry in Suffolk also as a rural place, but uh, well connected in terms of information technology. It is a good base and a good place for that industry. And we pray that it continues to make its contribution to the local economy, drawing in those people with great minds and uh, bringing in wealth and money and all those other things that that uh, virtual connectivity may bring. We pray too for the Reverend Canada Ellis in the Kierwa Deanery in Kagera Diocese, wherever that may be. We pray for him and his people. They will know your provision, your protection and your peace. And on our patch, we pray for the people and businesses of Wissett Road, Godfrey's Hill, Chediston Road, Chediston Street, Nuns Hill, Linstead Road, Rumba Road, Lodge Lane, Halesworth Road and the street in Chediston. In Wissett, the street, Lodge Lane, Grays Lane, Nuns Hill, Farm Close, Wissett Road, Banks Lane, Rumber Road, Chediston Road. And in Spectral, the Poplars, Grub Lane, Stone Street, Hog Lane, Hall Lane, Church Lane, Halesworth Road, Butts Road, Gavel Street and Nollers Lane. And Halesworth Road, Godfrey's Lane, Mary's Lane, Linstead Road, St James's Lane, Rookery Lane, Chediston Road, Cratfield Road, the street and Church Lane in Linstead. We ask that those who believe on you will be salt and light in those communities. Those that do not yet believe will have opportunities to do so as their lives go better or worse. We pray for the businesses based in those addresses also, especially those that are involved in farming. They will be sustained and supported and be able to make sound decisions to maintain their budgets, their cash flow, their income, their outgoings throughout the year, that they may continue to provide good jobs and services to the local economy. My Corona side, we pray for schools, colleges, charities and businesses as they seek to maintain their response, keeping people safe, but maintaining their um, aims and objectives we pray for charities, especially where they've been forced to close down or change or alter their engagement. As we have as churches, we are charities too. We thank you that there are changes taking place, that we are freer now, but we have our responsibilities to assess risk and to keep people safe. We pray they will make, we will make those decisions well as we work alongside schools and business to maintain and promote local society in this place. We pray for Jilly Jean, Paddy and Doreen, Olive, David, Mike, Kay, Dennis, Linda, Di, Francis, Jean, Valerie, Paul, Sarah, Jill, Mary, Rosie, Barbara, Beryl, Maggie, Pauline, Nicholas, Ron, Jim, Anthony, Betty, Peter, Margaret, Anne, Roger and Frankie and any others that we may know of who need God's intervention to heal, to provide financially, to help the relationship 
to help with faith. Whatever it is that is bringing them down, we thank you that you are the lifter up. And as you were lifted up, you lift us up also. We pray that that will be the experience of for these for whom we pray. We pray too for those who walk with them. Be they family, volunteers or professionals doing their best to make the situation better. We pray that they will be encouraged and that they will have the support that they need in their turn. We thank you for all that's good in the lives of Sally, Reginald, Gillian, Ray, Graham, Pauline, Graham, Richard, Neville, Audrey, Roger, Ben, Andy and Margaret and all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident and those who have taken their own lives. We remember those we have known and loved and see no longer, all whose years mine fought at this time, those who have served you faithfully here. We ask that according to your promises to humanity, you grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn that we will know your comforting presence, and just as your spirit was there in the chaos of creation, so may you speak and bring light and order into that chaos, that we may be fruitful and resume our responsibilities towards ourselves, towards you, towards creation. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty and everlasting God, who called your servant Ninian to preach the gospel to the people of Northern Britain, raise up in this and every land heralds and evangelists of your kingdom, that your church may make known the immeasurable riches of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube. And farewell.